Mystery Month, yay! Every morning this month, I wake up and look to see what's waiting for me under the Tubman tree. Will it be a white person telling me what Martin Luther King would have wanted? Or better yet, someone saying, why do we need a Black History Month? How would you like it if we had a White History Month? You might be thinking that's crazy. The only reason we know about such notable white achievements as Betsy Ross's apparently groundbreaking ability to use a needle and thread or Paul Revere's remarkable ability to scream and ride a horse at the same time is because every month is White History Month. But hear me out. I think we do need a White History Month because the American history that's taught in schools is so whitewashed, we don't learn the real story. We learn lies like George Washington chopping down a cherry tree, but not the fact that George had 18 slaves before he turned 18. 18 slaves. When I was 18, I didn't have 18 shirts. I had three shirts and they all looked like this. <laughs> Each one of them, cuter than the last. We learned that Abraham Lincoln said four score and seven years ago, but not that he said, I am not nor ever have been in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the black and white races. There must be the position of superior and inferior, and I am in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race. They don't put that on the penny partially because it would make the penny too long, and partly because our schools don't teach an honest version of American history. And that's why we need White History Month. History shouldn't just be a list of names and dates. It's supposed to give us context for the present. How can we learn about Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass and MLK's response to inequality without understanding the true history of the country that enshrined that inequality into law? For example, in regular history, they tell you the Second Amendment was created to protect against tyranny. But during White History Month, you would learn the truth, that the right to bear arms was added to the Constitution so white men could keep their slaves in check. That is a true fact. See how much we're learning? White History Month is fun. I hope you're taking notes in your White History Month Trapper Keeper. Get up and shout, yay! It's Martin Luther King Day. It's a day we look upon with happiness and cheer. Get up and shout, yay! It's Martin Luther King Day. It's the day we remember what he was fighting for. A bunch of laws were made to keep black people oppressed. So black people organized to try to clean this mess. So MLK said, hey, America, we want civil rights. And they said, mm, maybe, just not as much as whites. A lot of white people got upset that we even dared to ask. And that's the really crazy part, so let's spend some time there. They hated black people so bad, they couldn't sit next to them on a bus. And they didn't just go away, they're still alive and voting. Like, people always look at the civil rights movement as like this little bit of time, but it lasted for ever. And it's still kind of going on. In theaters this spring, you've heard of Harriet Tubman's bravery. The way we're getting treated here will not stand. Her courage. And I have a plan to get out. I'm gonna escape this plantation. Her fearlessness. And then I'm gonna come back for all of you. Finally, a film that tells the truth about what drove her to greatness. And I'll tell you why I'm coming back for you. Because I have a dream. To see black people free. No. To end inequality. Not quite. To destroy the economic system that relies on our enslavement for other people's profit. N no, nothing like that. What is it then? To be on the $20 bill. Harriet's dream, the true story of what motivated one of the greatest women in history. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I can't run anymore. Yes, you can. Go on without me. No, I'm taking you north so you can have a wonderful life, so you can get married and have children who have children who have children who have children, and then those children. <laughs> those children will be free? No, those children will see my face on the $20 bill. The true story of her personal life. Harriet, you don't have to keep going back for them. You've done enough. Enough to be on the five, maybe, or the 10, but not enough to be on the 20. 
What? And the true story of her legacy. Miss Tubman, I owe you everything. I'll honor your memory by working every day of my life to end our oppression. Or could you get my face on the 20? <laughs> I, I don't see how. It's easy. I made a prototype. You see it. Coming this February, it's the story of an icon. Follow me to freedom. Yeah! yeah! And when we get there, let's change the way money looks. Yeah. Come on. Come on, guys. Harriet's dream. Why have real change when you can have a symbol on a piece of paper? In the past few weeks, several state legislatures have introduced bills banning critical race theory. They've done it in Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and a bunch of other states where you can buy Confederate flags at gas stations. But the thing is, while some Americans are furious about critical race theory, a lot of people don't even know what it is. And I don't blame them. Critical race theory sounds like the subtitle of a book called Mario Kart for Dummies. First, I'm gonna pick up speed, then I'm gonna throw some nanas, then I'm gonna get some coins, and that is my critical race theory. Now, in order to talk about critical race theory, we're gonna start with something called the 1619 Project. The 1619 Project is an extraordinary Pulitzer Prize winning work of journalism, conceived of by a reporter named Nicole Hannah-Jones. It was released to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of enslaved Africans in the colonies that would become America. That's right, the first anniversary is paper, the fifth is wood, and the 400th is well-researched and award-winning journalism. Get to work, husbands. One of the reasons the 1619 Project has been so controversial is that it proposes that we should talk a lot more about the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black people when we talk about the foundations of our country, which of course means acknowledging that racism permeates our history. Because the fact is right now, kids aren't learning the realities of our history. In 2018, only 8% of U.S. high school seniors could identify slavery as the central cause of the Civil War. And that is horrifying. That's like only 8% of kids knowing you can make a volcano with Mentos and Diet Coke. They're both basic facts. Now, the good news is that about two-thirds of students do seem to know that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves, except, and here's the thing, it absolutely did not do that. That required a whole constitutional amendment, which wasn't even ratified till after Abraham Lincoln died in a horrible boating accident. All the 1619 Project was supposed to do is help teach students about the role slavery has played in American history. Now, some people claim that's rewriting history, and maybe it is, but shouldn't we revise things when we get better information? We used to prescribe cocaine for toothaches. Now we know better, and it's mostly used so that Former lacrosse players can talk about crypto for seven hours straight. Yeah, you gotta have Bitcoin, bro. The point is, as we learn more, of course we should adjust what we're teaching. In some parts of the country, if students learn black history at all, they learn that most masters treated their slaves kindly or slaves were given the opportunity to become Christians instead of remaining heathen or that slaves got to eat all the barbecue Pringles they wanted. All of those things are equal parts bullshit, but the first two are actual quotes from a textbook that was used in South Carolina for 130 years, which is probably why their current senator thinks that racism doesn't exist. He thinks it disappeared right around when Daniel Boone killed all the dinosaurs. Now, this would be a great time for me to tell you what we need to do to improve our national history curriculum, but here's the thing. We don't have a national history curriculum. Every state sets its own teaching standards. Think of school curriculums like state mottos. Every state has a different one and some of them are batshit crazy. Oregon's state motto is, she flies with her own wings. Uh, that's not a motto, that's a tagline for a cicada biopic. The fact is most states don't mandate a specific amount of black history at all, which is why most white people only know about Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, and Barack Obama. Even worse, 
20% of them think that that's Destiny's Child. If only there were some kind of, say, prize-winning black history curriculum developed by some of the greatest scholars in the country. I'm sure that Americans would welcome it with open arms. And by arms, I mean guns, because it turns out there are a lot of white people who really don't want to learn the truth about America. And that finally brings us back to critical race theory, which is just a way of examining society and history without pretending that racism doesn't exist. Racism is part of our past and our present. It's been with us for 400 years. You can't squash it into two sentences in a textbook between the Civil War and the Roaring Twenties. You shouldn't fix history to make you feel better. Learning about slavery feels awful. Too bad. Try living with its repercussions while white people tell you there weren't any. Also, it should make you feel bad. It should make you feel so bad that you make sure nothing like it ever happens again. Critical race theory gives us the tools to examine our history in an open and honest way and to fix the parts of our educational system that aren't doing that.